In today's digital world, microchips are everything. They're in your phone, your car, even the satellites orbiting Earth. They're the lifeblood of modern technology, driving everything from smartphones to advanced military equipment. From autos to manufacturing to data centers uh, to communications, everything depends on semiconductors. Let's put this in perspective. Microchips are so powerful that the global semiconductor market is expected to hit a staggering $611 billion by the end of 2024. That's why microchips are often called the new oil. Whoever controls them controls the future. The market should reign. This is not like any other industry. This is so critical for the future. For years, the U.S. held that control through tech giants like Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. But now, China, who used to rely heavily on importing advanced chips, is flipping the script. Beijing has made microchip self-sufficiency a top priority, and their progress is starting to make the U.S. a bit nervous. Take Huawei's Mate 60 smartphone, which was launched in August 2023. This wasn't just another phone, it was a message. And with Chinese-designed and manufactured chips powering it, the Mate 60 really caught U.S. officials off guard. It proved that China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation was closing the gap faster than anyone anticipated. It changed everybody's view of this device was what was at the heart of it, the microprocessor that was designed and manufactured in China. And that's not all. Recently, China achieved two major milestones. First on the list, the world's first 28 nanometer embedded RRAM image quality adjustment chip. This chip isn't just any improvement, it's a technological leap for China. So what makes this chip so special? It integrates resistive random access memory directly onto the 28 nanometer process node. And trust me, that's a big deal. By embedding RAM, the chip eliminates the need for external memory devices, which means lower costs and way better efficiency. Think of it this way. Traditional chips rely on external memory to store important data, which can slow things down and drive up prices. But with embedded RRAM, the chip does it all internally, and the impact is already visible. This chip is being mass-produced in Beijing and is powering premium mini-LED TVs. The image quality, stunning. The efficiency, unmatched. But the real victory here is strategic. This chip was developed entirely in China with fully independent intellectual property rights. That means Beijing doesn't have to rely on foreign tech or licenses like they did in the past. Uh, sure, because this uh, the IP protection is very important for this, in this industry. But the implications go beyond consumer electronics, though. A chip this advanced can pave the way for innovations in AI, data centers, and even autonomous vehicles. It's a clear sign that China is no longer playing catch-up. It's leading in certain areas. And as if that wasn't enough, China has also developed the world's first 16-bit quantum microprocessor chip. That becomes a matter of national importance for, for the United States. This chip, developed by a research team at Hong Kong Polytechnic University, is designed for simulating complex molecular spectra. It uses a linear photonic network and compressed vacuum quantum light sources to achieve this feat. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why does this matter? Let me explain. Simulating molecular vibrations and reactions is critical for fields like drug discovery and material science. Until now, these simulations required massive supercomputers. But with this 16-bit quantum microprocessor, these tasks can be handled on a single chip. This isn't just a technological achievement for China, it's a revolution in quantum computing Imagine faster, more accurate simulations of protein structures or optimizing complex molecular reactions. The possibilities are endless, and just like the RRAM chip, this microprocessor represents China's move towards independence. It's not just about catching up with the US, it's about charting a new course altogether. But what does this mean for the US? 
let's talk about the implications. First, there's the economic impact. American companies like Intel and Nvidia have long relied on selling chips to China, one of the world's largest markets. But as China becomes self-sufficient, the revenue streams of these tech companies are shrinking. Then there's the military angle. Advanced chips are critical for US defense systems. If China continues innovating at this pace, it could erode America's technological superiority in military applications. And if China starts exporting these chips at competitive prices, well, that could shake the entire global tech industry up. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, cybersecurity. The US has long worried about the potential for hidden backdoors in Chinese-made chips. According to the US government, if these chips are embedded in all critical systems worldwide, the risks could be catastrophic. If you recall, in 2018, Bloomberg published a report that shook the tech world. It alleged that tiny surveillance chips, no bigger than a grain of rice, were secretly embedded into the servers used by major US companies, like Apple and Amazon. These chips were reportedly inserted during the manufacturing process in Chinese factories. Once installed, they could act as back doors, potentially giving access to sensitive data or even allowing remote control of the systems they were part of. That's the kind of cybersecurity nightmare the US fears. That explains why Washington is stepping up its efforts. For the US, it's about maintaining military and technological superiority and ensuring the critical systems aren't compromised. So how is the US responding to China's explosive rise in the semiconductor industry? Well, Washington isn't sitting idly. Over the past few years, it's unleashed a flurry of strategies to protect its dominance and slow China's momentum. Let's start with the Chips and Science Act of 2022. This landmark legislation was designed by Biden to revitalize domestic semiconductor manufacturing and reduce dependency on foreign suppliers, especially China. This is really the crowning jewel in, in the Biden policy crown. Along with that, the act also allocates $52 billion for semiconductor research, development, and production in the US. Today we mark one of the largest investments ever in our nation's history in semiconductor manufacturing. Of this, a significant chunk is going to subsidies for companies building chip fabrication plants, or FABs, on American soil. For the future of AI, for the future of all sorts of technological advances, it's absolutely critical that we keep this rate of innovation. But that's not all. The US hopes to train the next generation of chip engineers and maintain its edge in cutting edge technologies like AI and quantum computing. Then there are the export controls. In October 2022, the US announced sweeping restrictions on the sale of advanced semiconductors and chip-making equipment to China. The goal? To starve Beijing of the tools it needs to produce high-performance chips. These controls specifically target technologies like extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV, which is crucial for manufacturing chips at the 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer nodes. The US even persuaded allies like the Netherlands and Japan to join the effort. For example, Dutch company ASML, the only producer of EUV machines, is now prohibited from selling its most advanced equipment to Chinese firms. This was a bold move, but it didn't stop there. In August 2023, President Biden signed an executive order restricting US investments in Chinese companies involved in semiconductors, quantum computing, and AI. This order was designed to prevent American capital and expertise from helping to speed up China's technological advancements. But the US isn't just focused on its own companies. It's also advising allied nations to follow suit. In many cases, suppliers are being told to avoid having Chinese investors or shareholders in a bid to ensure that sensitive technologies remain out of Beijing's reach. And let's not forget the broader trade restrictions. 
Last year, the US imposed a ban on exporting the most advanced microchips to China. This included cutting-edge GPUs used in artificial intelligence, which are produced by American giants like NVIDIA. But here's the thing, these measures don't come without costs. By cutting off Chinese markets, US companies risk losing billions in revenue. For example, NVIDIA and AMD both saw significant drops in sales to China after the AI chip restrictions were implemented. But despite this, Washington believes the long-term gains outweigh the short-term losses. By hampering China's semiconductor progress, the US hopes to delay its rival's rise as a global tech superpower. But here's where things get tricky. Despite US efforts, containing China hasn't gone as planned. China is getting clever at finding ways to sidestep US restrictions. For example, some Chinese suppliers are setting up operations in countries like Singapore and Malaysia to continue serving global markets, while others are investing heavily in domestic research to eliminate reliance on foreign tech altogether. Let's not forget, China spends more on semiconductors than any other product. It's pouring billions into its chip industry in a bid to lead the next wave of innovation. The numbers don't lie. Sales of chip-making equipment to China remain high, despite Washington's restrictions. And here's the twist. Two decades ago, China was generations behind in the semiconductor race. Today, it's catching up at an unprecedented pace. So, where does this leave us? For the US, it's a race against time to maintain its lead. For China, it's a sprint to prove it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world's best. As we watch this high-stakes game unfold, it's certain that the outcome will shape the 21st century. The question is, who will come out on top? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and want more videos on China's growing dominance, don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a like and comment. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.